Well, hi, everybody. Kim Winter here from Logistics Executive Group, and thanks for joining us for our Business Leaders Series. Today, I have a special guest from deep down under, as you can see by the uh, the banner in the background there. Our guest today uh, hails originally from the UK, bit of a uh, boy's own story in terms of his journey. He's had a pretty exciting life so far um, through to the uh, through to South Africa, um, into uh, the military service there, right through a whole lot of industry roles, very senior positions in some global companies, and then in New Zealand some years ago. Without further ado, I'd love to welcome Trevor Barrett. Hey, Trevor, how are you doing? Hi, Cam. Uh, nice, uh, nice to uh, join you. And uh, thanks very much for the introduction. Yeah, kia ora, which is our, it's our traditional Māori welcome, and uh, glad you could join us. So, Trevor, uh, we always like to have our guests tell us a little bit about themselves. So I'll get you to do that intro, and then I want to um, give, give us a bit of a brief on New Zealand for those of you and, and listening and watching today that uh, don't know much about uh, Down Under, the land of the long white cloud. Um, give us a bit of a heads up, Trevor. Where was it? Where did you come from, and how did you end up in New Zealand? Hi, Kim. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a journey, but originally from the UK, immigrated to South Africa in '83. Grew up there, did my military service, stayed away from the border, and went to sea in the navy. Joined a uh, one of the biggest transport companies in Johannesburg. Worked my way through courier transport, bit of logistics through Schenker and ended up coming to New Zealand in the GFC 2008 uh, with a suitcase, bit of money, and restarted my whole career here in New Zealand. All good. And uh, give us give us a bit of a heads up on New Zealand, mate. Sh- size, shape, scale, dimension. For those who don't know about little old New Zealand, um, give us a heads up. Yep, cool. So New Zealand's population is about just over 5 million and the GDP is about two, uh, 212 billion US dollars, so only about 0.19% of the world's GDP, so pretty small, but still quite a significant amount. And the country size is similar to about Italy, uh, fit in a similar size with a huge reduction in population compared to them. So yeah, there's uh, quite a bit going on to split into two islands, so you have to take a ferry between the two, um, which brings its own challenges for the logistics and supply chain side of it, trying to do diff- two different um, sides of uh, the country. So, yeah, I hope that uh, helps to give you a bit of an idea. Yeah, thanks, Trev. So uh, also one of the things that people won't recognise uh, so much necessarily about New Zealand is it's been full of inventors, so it's, uh, I think New Zealand is the most geologically young country of the world, having come out, out, of, the, out of the ocean quite a bit later than most other uh, countries around the world or uh, subcontinents or islands as New Zealand is. Um, but uh, yeah, so a couple of hundred years old and two, a couple of hundred million years old. But uh, tell us a little bit about some of the inventions, because I know, for example, the jet engine was uh, designed and, and evolved and developed in New Zealand. Tell us about a few others. Well, yeah, the interesting thing is that, uh, having a look at, they say the flat white was made here, apparently. Um, I mean, even the bungee jumping, uh, even the first joggers, there was someone, one of the, the Kiwis in the uh, early 30s or 40s who created the whole thing about jogging. Um, even hairpins and the uh, egg beater, which is quite surprising, came from here. And your disposable syringes of all things came from New Zealand. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. And even the Britain bike, as you know, I mean, the building of the Britain the guy who built his own uh, motorbike and took on the big guys. Wow. And of course, there's a worldwide, uh, or there's a world war between Australia and New Zealand as to who, who invented the Pavlova uh, and, uh, and, and or Vegemite. So, you know, that, that's been a long standing battle between the two countries. Yeah, definitely still Pavlova stories going around. Okay, Trev. So you, your business in Australia um, there is is very much split into two. You've got the consulting business and you've got the recruitment. Just want to talk about the, the globe. We talk often in, on the show about the global talent shortage in logistics and supply chain, exacerbated especially around the last two years because of COVID. Um, how's it in New Zealand? I mean, I think you're, you're in COVID right now. You're in lockdown. Um, how are you placed for, for talent in the supply chain? Yeah, so, I mean, we're Auckland still in lockdown, level four, hoping to come out next week. The uh, rest of the country is at level two. 
but yeah, it's, it's, it's a big shortage. Um, I mean, even on seek with the amount of jobs that keep on there's over 3000, um, just in supply chain alone. Um, I'm getting contacted daily by customers looking for staff on all different levels from senior down to managers and down to forklift drivers. So with the immigration side being put on hold does put a lot of pressure on uh, the local country. Um, a lot of people, the Kiwis have moved to Australia for the money. So they're not coming back only when the the bubble opened up. A lot of them went back over, which even complicates it further, which then brings to the, the transformation on the AI and digitization where a lot of these companies are now looking to WMS, um, a lot more um, innovative side of it. Now, you, where before a lot of businesses didn't have the um, – pick to light um, a lot of the scam pick scam pack side of it which has now become in the FFCG side is is a basic norm um, you've got the likes of food stuff who's opened one of the biggest DCs here um, Sistema also as you know is a Kiwi brand that was started here and is, is basically bought by the Americans um, same thing importing huge machines now to automate it to try and reduce the 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 actual having to employ the staff because of the, the, the different complexities to it. So, yeah, there's a, a lot going on here locally uh, where we're trying to innovate and look at ways of actually making it better. Um, and because we are on a smaller scale, it allows us to actually ramp up and ramp down a lot quicker and try things. Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks for giving us a bit of an overview. I mean, uh, it is an interesting topography. And I recall from my many news in New Zealand that uh, a lot of the telcos used to use and probably still do use New Zealand to test new technology because it's a confined uh, country with a lot of um, the mountain range running down pretty much both our islands, especially the South Island, and testing out tech mobile technology to see how well it'll work in certain environments. So that was uh, was always a good one. Um, since well, prior to you coming on as the managing partner for us in New Zealand, um, we've been working in New Zealand for nearly 20 years, of course. We placed a lot of senior executive roles in some of the big companies. So, um, yeah, there's large companies like Toll and Linfox are there. Uh, there's the main freights of the world, main freights, uh, the most famous New Zealand uh, logistics firm, done an incredible job, amazing share price. Some really innovative guys running that and girls running that organisation um, worldwide. They've done an incredible job. Um, big companies like Fonterra, which is a big chunk of the uh, the job board there, and also the share the share market. I think is dominated by Fonterra, um, world's biggest dairy company, isn't it? In some shape or form. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, uh, Fonterra basically runs uh, as a very big industry of all their dairy. Um, getting that through with your milk powder, baby powder, and your exports to China, Asia, very, very big exports and uh, very big with Maersk. Uh, they're one of the Maersk's biggest uh, accounts and they make up a big uh, part of the exports out of New Zealand, which helps us keep the trade going because they bring the ships here with your, your imports with then offsets with the exports. So, yep, it's, it's very good for New Zealand on the uh, – on that side of it, plus we have the, our, our meat um, and our fruit exports, uh, which go out a lot of the time, kiwi fruits, persimmons, those sorts of asparagus as well, which is a very, very seasonal products, but apples, oranges, all those sorts of things, which keep the export side of it going. Yeah, I think uh, I think New Zealand's pretty famous for its manuka honey as well. I think manuka actually it's, it's in the global courts right now, the world court, in regards to ownership of the name manuka, if I'm not mistaken, um, which is one of the most valuable liquid products you can lay your hands on. Call it liquid gold, um, and uh, we see that on uh, you know, rocketing in, in price because of its medicinal and medical uh, sort of qualities around the world. Hey, cold chains big. We've we've always been fairly significant there in terms of placement with some of the big cold chain companies, a lot of independents, but the world's two biggest cold chain companies are there, and that's uh, Lineage Logistics and uh, Americold. So cold chain's a big part of the uh, the whole chain there, yeah, the value chain. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, over the years um, since I've been here, it's grown a lot. Americold is uh, quite small and uh, basically have expanded very, very fast with um, currently building quite a few new facilities. Big Chills, another one now, which is also family owned mm-hmm. cold chain side of it, which was up against Halls. Uh, Halls, as you know, is another Kiwi brand that was in the cold chain side of it and had majority of the market. So now it's just getting bigger and bigger. A lot of these businesses now opening up big DCs around the country to allow for the expansion. So yes, cold chain's getting bigger and bigger. Now the air freight side of it, especially um, trying to move it down into the areas that it's needed instead of trying to bring it to Auckland because that's also gives your fish, salmon, crayfish, um, all those mussels, oysters, as you know, bluff oysters, big down here, trying to get them overseas. So these cold chain uh, places are getting bigger and bigger as the expansion of the New Zealand product makes it uh, its way globally. Yeah, I think um, I think as Kiwis, we claim to have the best seafood in the world, really, don't we? <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, the, the our waters here are pretty clean. I mean, as you know, there's no drilling of oil here, so that makes it even better. Um, so, you know, don't have all of those problems of, of the seabed. Plus, there's not many uh, uh, ships traveling through the water here. So you have that minimal side of it down the South Island. Well, Trev, I know you've got a lot of projects going on there on an ongoing basis, yourself and the team, and especially around uh, the supply chain transformation. Our, our M&A team is quite active down there with you. So, uh, look, we wish you well moving forward as you head off into the What are you heading into the summer now, of course? So the uh, yeah, uh, we're in spring already. (laughs) I know you're part of the uh, part of the Lycra Army, and you like to get out on your uh, on your racing bike and uh, climbing up to a thousand feet in a a day. I think on one of your bike rides I saw the other day online. Um, So good luck with that. With the new new, the better weather coming along, Um, what I'm going to do is is going to ask you to make yourself available every month. We're going to have a quick short, sharp update on the supply chain and what's happening with trends and what's happening forward. And of course, a bit of an update on what's happening with the COVID fight. I think New Zealand was number one or number two in the world in terms of control of the COVID with lockdown, but unfortunately now about a hundred and something plus in terms of your rollout. So the government seems to have uh, missed a step there, but uh, catching up as quick as they can, yeah? Oh, yeah, they uh, they now basically just uh, got a new shipment from Spain of the Pfizer. So that now they're trying to ramp that up faster as what they can so we can look at the 70, 80% uh, vaccination so we can actually start um, opening up the borders again. They've just announced they're doing a digital uh, passport as well for the COVID to allow you to travel. So, yeah, we're hoping to get there quick so we can get out of these lockdowns. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to book you in for that. We'll call it the New Zealand Monthly and a bit of an update with Trevor Barrett. And uh, before I go, Trev, uh, not unlike anyone else who's a guest on the show, uh, really want to get this one tip from you in regards to, given that there's such a massive shortage in talent right across the supply chain and so many jobs, as you've mentioned, are open um, and your borders are closed, um, give us a hint as to a tip to our followers as the one thing that people can do that you'd recommend to get into the logistics and supply chain sectors, which for the first time in many, many years is now in the spotlight of, of industry sectors. Yeah, I mean, uh, I still recommend the uh, Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport courses that they have available. Um, I'm a member here locally in New Zealand and have been for many years and did my training through that. So definitely a good hands-on way to get into the industry without having to do a degree or go to university. It it gives you that step in. Um, And the the course that I did allowed me to do my master's. So even without having a degree, uh, a younger in life, this allows you to get that hands-on experience to understand how they actually can implement it. And I would recommend that for anyone who want to try to get into the supply chain. Good on you, Trev. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, as always, folks, for all of you out there in the, in the supply chain and uh, first responders keeping us all safe, um, by all means, everybody, take care, stay distance, wear the mask, no matter where you are. If you can get the jab, get it um, and uh, look after everybody out in the community. Um, thanks again, Trev, and we'll see you next month. Yep, thanks, Kim. Appreciate it.